ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى اله وسلم تسليما كثيرا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارحام ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما اما بعد فان اصدق الحديث كتاب الله indeed the most truthful of speech and the best of words are the speech and the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wa khayrun hadi hadi muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the best guidance we have is the guidance of our beloved messenger muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa sharrul umuri muhdathatuha and the worst of affairs are those things we really invent into this religion of ours wa kullu muhdathatin bid'ah and everything we really invent into this religion of ours is an innovation وَكُلَّ بِدْعَةٍ ضَلَالَةٍ And every innovation is misguidance and every disray. وَكُلَّ ضَلَالَةٍ فِي النَّارِ Every going astray, every misguidance is in the hellfire. ثُمَّ أَمَّا بَعْدٍ My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, Ibn Al-Qayyim Jawziyya, رَحِمُهُ اللَّهِ He had a beautiful statement. And one that we should reflect upon to always have hope, to always run back to Allah when we sin. But to be careful to never get too much pride and arrogance with the good we may do. قال ابن القيم رحمه الله إن الذنب قد يكون أنفع للعبد إذا اقتر إذا اقترنت به التوبة من كثير من الطاعات وهذا معنى قول بعض السلف قد يعمل العبد الذنب فيدخل به الجنة ويعمل الطاعة فيدخل بها النار. قالوا وكيف ذلك؟ قال يعمل الذنب. فلا يزال نصب عينيه إن قام وإن قعد وإن مشى ذكر ذنبه فيحدث فيحدث له أن كان أن كسارا وتوبة واستغفارا وندما فيكون ذلك سبب نجاته ويعمل الحسن فلا تزال نصب عينيه إن قام وإن قعد وإن مشى كلما ذكرها أورث 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 أورثتها أورثته عجبا وكبرا ومنه فتكون سبب هلاكه ابن القيم رحمه الله he said sin may be more beneficial to a person if it leads him to make توبة to repent to his Lord than engaging in many acts of obedience and this is the meaning of the statement of some of the salaf some of our righteous predecessors that a person may commit a sin And because of it, he will enter Jannah. <clears throat> Or he may do an act of worship. But because of it, he will enter the hellfire. So they said to him, how is that? He replied, he may commit a sin. But then it remains at the forefront of his thoughts. And when he stands, or he sits, or he walks, he remembers his sin. So then there comes about shame. And comes repentance. And seeking forgiveness and regret. So that will be the means of his salvation. And on the other hand, one may perform a good deed. And he always thinks about the good deed he does. It remains at the forefront of his thoughts. So when he stands or he sits or he walks, he always remembers it. And by the result of that, by the result of that, <clears throat> he becomes amazed with himself. He becomes prideful. So that will be from the cause of his doom. فَيَكُونُ الدَّمْ مُوجِبًا لِتَرَتُّبْ طاعات وحسنات ومعاملات قلبية من خوف الله والحياء منه والإطراق بين يديه منكسا رأسه خجلا باكيا نادما مستقيلا ربه. So the sin may be the factor that leads him to obedience. 
It may lead him to do good deeds and to have good conduct of the heart out of fear of Allah and shyness towards him, hanging his head in shame, weeping over his sins with regret, seeking the forgiveness of his Lord. Each of these effects is more beneficial for the slave than the act of obedience, which results in him feeling powerful or proud or feeling contempt for people and looking at them with belittlement. So there is no doubt that this sin is better before Allah and is closer to safety and success than the one who's amazed by his own acts of obedience and he becomes arrogant and proud and haughty who thinks he's doing good with Allah or he's doing Allah a favor when ayadu billah. This beautiful statement, my brothers and sisters in Islam, deserves attention and it deserves reflection that when you sin, regret having that nadam, having that regret for your sin and constantly seeking Allah's forgiveness for it and making tawbah for it, never despairing at the mercy of Allah, this will bring you to success. But at the same time, no matter how much good you do, no matter how many acts of obedience you do, never pat yourself on the back to the point where you become proud and arrogant, belittling the other people and what they may do. Allah, He says, قُلْ يَا عِبَادِ الَّذِينَ أَسْرَفُوا عَلَىٰ أَنفُسِهِمْ لَا تَقْنَةُ مَنْ رَحْمَةِ اللَّهِ إِنَّ اللَّهَ يَغْفِرَ الذُّنُوبَ جَمِيعًا إِنَّهُ هُوَ الْغَفُورُ الرَّحِيمُ Allah says what means, Say, O ibadi, O my slaves, who have transgressed against themselves, لَا تَقْنَةُ مَنْ رَحْمَةِ اللَّهِ Never despair for the mercy of Allah. Never despair. Sins to the level of the heavens and back, Allah can forgive them in the blink of your eye. Never despair for the mercy of Allah by committing, by uh, that those who have transgressed against themselves. Do not despair for the mercy of Allah. Verily, Allah forgives all sins. Truly, He is oft forgiving, most merciful. Al Harith ibn Suwayd, rahimahullah, he said that Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, radiallahu anhu, he narrated two hadith, one from himself and one from the Prophet. فَقَالَ عَبْدُ اللَّهِ إِنَّ الْمُؤْمِنْ يَرَى ذَنُوبُهُ كَأَنَّهُ فِي أَصْلِ جَبْلٍ يَخَافُ أَنْ يَقَعَ عَلَيْهِ وَإِنَّ الْفَاجِرْ يَرَى ذَنُوبُهُ يَرَى ذَنُوبُهُ كَذُبَابٍ وَقَعَ عَلَى أَنْفِهِ فَقَالَ بِهِ هَكَذَا فَطَارَ رواه الترمذي وهذا صحيح حديث صحيح Prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم and Ibn Mas'ud they narrated the same narration as for Abdullah ibn Mas'ud's narration, he said that the believer, he sees his sins as if he's at the base of a large mountain, and he's afraid that that mountain will crush him. Imagine if you were at the base of a mountain, and you heard it starting to crumble, the earth was shaking, and you knew that it would fall upon you and crush you. This is the way the believer looks at his sins, always thinking of them, as if they're ready to destroy him and put him to doom and to destruction. But the fajr, the corrupt person, the wicked person, they see their sins like an annoyance. Like a fly hitting your nose. Your nose. You swat away at it because it's bothering you until it flies away and you don't pay any more attention to it. So this is wickedness to not reflect upon your sin. This is wickedness to just be annoyed by the sins you've done when they come to your mind. But it's from the ways of the believer to look at their sins as if they were standing at the base of a mountain and that mountain was ready to fall upon them and crush them. This is how we should live in our actions. But yet, at the same time, not despairing for the mercy of Allah. <clears throat> Anas ibn Malik radiallahu anhu, he narrated from the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wasallam a hadith Qudsi, which means the Prophet sallallahu alayhi narrated something from Allah that we do not find in the Qur'an. فَقَالَ اللَّهِ يَا أَبْنِ آدَمْ إِنَّكَ مَا دَعَوْتَنِي وَرَجَوْتَنِي غَفَرْتُ لَكَ غَفَرْتُ لَكَ عَلَى مَا كَانَ فِيكَ وَلَا أُبَالِي يَا أَبْنِ آدَمْ لَوْ بَلَغَتْ ذُنُوبُكَ عَنَا عَنَانَ السَّمَاءِ ثُمَّ اسْتَغْفَرْتَنِي غَفَرْتُ لَكَ وَلَا أُبَالِي يَا أَبْنِ آدَمْ إِنَّكَ لَوْ أَتَيْتَنِي بِقُرَابِ الْأَرْضِ خَطَايَا ثُمَّ لَقِيتَنِي لَا تُشْرِكُ بِي شَيْئًا لَأَتَيْتُكَ بِقُرَابِهَا مَغْفِرًا In this amazing hadith, one that would give hope to anyone, no matter great, no matter how great their sins, no matter how great their evil deeds, one that would give hope to turn your life around and come back to Allah, being firm upon tawheed at all matters of your life. 
holding on to Tawheed and never stopping your prayers because these will bring you to that successful, insha'Allah, meeting with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah said in this hadith, Qudsi, O son of Adam, verily as long as you called upon me and you hoped in me, I forgave you despite whatever may have occurred from you. And I did not mind to forgive you for those things. O son of Adam, were your sins to reach the clouds of the sky, then you sought forgiveness from me, I would forgive you, and I would not mind, even if the sins poured up to the level of the heavens and the earth. Allah would, not, would forgive them with ease, and He would not mind. O son of Adam, if you come to me with sins nearly as great as the whole earth, then you met me without committing shirk. You met me without associating partners with me. This is the reason why we will continue to pound the tawheed into our minds and our hearts. It is the most important topic because all the good deeds you do are worth nothing if the tawheed, if the aqidah in the head, if the manhaj, the school, what you're upon is not stable. So these, this is why it's essential. All of this comes back to sins as great as the earth being forgiven as long as you do not associate partners with Allah and worship. In truth, Allah said, then if you've met me and not, not committing shirk, not associating anything with me, I would come to you with forgiveness nearly as great as that in this hadith is Hassan in the Sunnah of Tirmidhi. Abu Ayyub Khalid ibn Zayd radiallahu anhu, he narrated that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, لَوْلَا أَنَّكُمْ لَوْلَا أَنَّكُمْ تُذْنِبُونَ لَخَلَقَ اللَّهُ خَلْقًا يُذْنِبُونَ فَيَسْتَغْفِرُونَ this hadith, which is in Sahih Muslim, the Prophet ﷺ, he said, were you not to commit sins, Allah would create a people who would commit sins and turn to Him asking for forgiveness, and He would forgive them. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, perfection was not written for the people of the يعني, Bani Adam, for the children of Adam. السلام, it was not written for us. We sin, and we err, and we err, and we commit mistakes. But we must always turn back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, seeking His forgiveness. عن ابن معقل رضي الله عنه قال دخلت مع أبي على عبد الله فسمعته يقول قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم الندم توبة فقال له أبي أنت سمعت أنت سمعت النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم يقول الندم توبة قال نعم روح ابن ماجه وهذا حديث حسن من معقل he said I entered with my father upon Abdullah and I heard him saying that the messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم saying when you have regrets when you have remorse when you hate what you did to transgress Allah's limits this is توبة this in and of in of itself is توبة it is repentance so my father said, did you actually hear the Prophet ﷺ say, النَّدُمُ تَوْبَةِ That remorse and, uh, and, and uh, that remorse and regret is repentance? And he said, yes. It was narrated from Anis ibn Malik that the Messenger of Allah ﷺ, he said, كُلُّ بَنِ آدَمْ خَطَّاءُ وَخَيْرُ الْخَطَّائِنَ التَّوَّابُونَ رواه ابن Maja وَهَذَا حَدِيثٌ حَسَنٌ That the Prophet ﷺ, he said, every child of Adam commits sins. And the best of those who commit sin are those who repent and make tawbah. وعن أبي هريرة رضي الله عنه قال قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم إني لا أستغفر الله وأتوب إليه في اليوم مئة مرة. That the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said that I make I make istighfar I ask Allah for forgiveness and I repent to Him in the day one hundred times in each day. And this was the greatest of mankind, the best of the creation, and Allah عز وجل. Yani still, uh, and the Prophet وسلم, still was of the ones who would say Astaghfirullah wa atubu ilayhi a hundred times in the day. And here we are, bathing in sin, indulging in sin, sins to the level of the heavens, sins as great as the earth. And yet we're not turning to Allah, and this is all He's asked of us. To turn of Him, to beg forgiveness from Him, to repent to Him, and do not associate partners with Him in worship. And you will be met with just as large of the amount of forgiveness and mercy. May Allah bless us with this. Aqulu qali hada astaghfirullah wa lakum. Abu Allah yaghfir lakum bin Allah.
ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونستهديه ونصلي ونسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا وبعد my dear brothers and sisters in islam the statements of the righteous predecessors were very deep in meaning that one through his sin could enter jannah and one through his obedience could enter the hellfire through sin you can get closer to your Lord, repenting to Him, asking Him to be, to be firm, to not return to sin, to forgive you and to have mercy upon you. And by this way, it can be better for you. But that opposite side, how can that ta'a, how can that obedience lead you to not enter Jannah and to go to the hellfire? So we see it's because of the arrogance and the pride that can come with it. That you look at yourself with such amazement for what you do in your life, and you belittle the people. So we must look at the other end of the coin. Abdullah رضي الله عنه he narrated عن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم قال لا يدخل الجنة من كان في قلبه مثقال ذرة من كبر ولا يدخل النار يعني من من كان في قلبه مثقال ذرة من إيمان فقال إن الله قال فقال له رجل إنه يعجبني أن يكون ثوبي حسنا ونعلي حسنا قال إن الله يحب الجمال ولكن الكبر من بطر الحق وغمص الناس أو في الرواية وغمط الناس The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم in this narration which is authentic, صحيح in the Sunnah al-Tirmidhi he said whoever has a speck of pride or arrogance when we talk about a speck that's when you see the ray of sun coming through the glass and you see these things floating in the air Stuff that can fall upon you and you wouldn't even know it's upon you because of the lightness of its weight. Whoever has this amount of pride or arrogance in his or her heart, they will not enter Jannah. And whoever has that same speck of Iman in their heart, of faith, true faith and belief, and this is not just a statement, this is not just a belief in the heart, but it must include the actions of the limbs, <clears throat> then they will not be admitted to the hellfire. So a man said to him, O Messenger of Allah I love that my thobe, that my dress be nice and good. And I love that my shoes or my sandals be nice and good. Ones that are, you know, that they, they look nice, they're beautiful. So Allah's Messenger وسلم, said to him, Indeed, Allah loves beauty. Allah loves that you beautify yourself as long as it's not to an extreme, as long as it's not with haram, as long as it's not extravagant. He said, but kibir, pride and arrogance is refusing the truth, denying the truth, when it's given to you, with proofs, with evidences, and you still deny it, and belittling the people, looking down on the people, putting yourself above somebody else, by some faculties, or benefits, or blessings Allah gave you, but maybe didn't give them. Allah Azza wa Jal, He says, وَإِذْ قُلْنَا لِلْمَلَائِكِ تَسْجُدُوا لِآدَمَ فَسَجَدُوا إِلَّا إِبْلِيسَ أَبَى وَاسْتَكْبَرَ وَكَانَ مِنَ الْكَافِرِينَ Allah says in Surah Al-Baqarah what means and mention when we said to the malaika, to the angels to prostrate before Adam. So they prostrated except for Iblis. Iblis, he was from the jinn. But up until this point, he was obedient to Allah in every way whatsoever. But now came this test where the angels, they obeyed Allah's command, they bowed down to Adam. But Iblis, he refused. He was arrogant. Stakbara. He refused by this action. He was arrogant. Astakbara. Wa kana min al-kafirin. And he became of the disbelievers. What destroyed Iblis, who was good up until that point, that one thing that destroyed Iblis, that one instance, was that arrogance and that pride. Ana khayrun min. I'm better than this thing you created. Khalaqtani min na wa khalaqtuhu min teen. You created me from fire and him from dirt from clay, from the earth. This arrogance, that one instance destroyed him. Imagine a lifetime of arrogance and pride. Allah commanding you to pray and to make sajda to him. Minimum, the five times a day, the 17th sajood a day, when you combine all the raka'at we have to do. At a minimum. One instance destroyed at least. But we have days and days of those instances. Disbelieving in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. عن أبي هريرة رضي الله عنه قال قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم لا ينظر الله يوم القيامة إلى من جر إزاره بقرة رواه البخاري 
The Prophet ﷺ, he said, Allah will not look on the day of resurrection at the person, at the man who drags his izab, his stove, his pants, whatever it may be, his garment, behind him out of pride and arrogance. In one narration, he said about the one who said he's not doing it out of pride and arrogance, indeed it is arrogance, it is kibbeh, to drag the garments. And this is something you see many people do to show off their, their richness or their status, that they have their robe or their garment from the men laying on the ground instead of above their ankles. And Haratha ibn Wahab ibn Khuzali, he reported that Allah's Messenger he said, أَلَا أُخَبِّرُكُمْ بِأَهْلِ الْجَنَّةِ كُلُّ ضَعِيثٍ مُتَضَعِثٍ لَوْ أَقْسَمَ عَلَى اللَّهِ لَأَبَرَّهُ أَلَا أُخَبِّرُكُمْ بِأَهْلِ النَّارِ كُلُّ جَوَّادٍ زَنِيمٍ متكبر. The Prophet وسلم, he said in this authentic hadith, Shall I not inform you about the people who will make it to paradise, who will make it to Jannah? He said, it's every meek and humble person who is considered to be humble. And if they were to adjure or urge or request in the name of Allah, Allah would certainly fulfill it to them. The weak, the feeble, the ones who are looked down upon, the poor, who most of the people will look down upon because of their situation that most of the time is not in their control. These will be from the people of Jannah. The Prophet ﷺ said, Should I not tell you about the people or inform you about the inmates of the hellfire? He said, They are every proud and arrogant, mean, rude, haughty person. Now imagine your life and question yourself. What categories do you fall into with what Allah has blessed you with? Ibn Umar radiallahu anhuma, he reported that the Messenger of Allah وسلم, he said, مَنْ تَعَظَّمَ فِي نَفْسِهِ أَوْ أَخْتَالَ فِي مِشْيَتِهِ لَقِيَ اللَّهَ عَزَّ وَجَلْ وَهُوَ عَلَيْهِ غَضْبَانِ Shaykh al-Albani, he authenticated this hadith that Imam al-Bukhari put in al-Adab al-Mufrad. So it is an authentic hadith where the Prophet وسلم, he said, if anyone behaves insolently or walks with an arrogance, and you see this nowadays, some of the people who have the wealth or the riches or the fame or the money, and they walk with a strut, with a strut, that just, it reeks of arrogance when you see it. And many of you, some people might come to mind, but then you have those who aren't necessarily even in that position. But because of having a large home, or a big family, or a lot of money, they walk in that same stride, as if they're above other people. Batar al-haq wa ghamat al-nas, denying the truth, looking down on the people, is kibir, this is arrogance and pride. So the Prophet ﷺ said, if anyone behaves in an arrogant or prideful way, if anyone walks with arrogance or in an arrogant way, he will meet Allah covered with Allah's anger. He will meet Allah covered with his anger. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, Allah, he said, إِنَّ أَكْرَمُكُمْ عِنْدَ اللَّهِ أَتْقَاكُمْ The most noble of you, the best of you, the highest of you in the sight of Allah Azzawajal is the one who has the most taqwa. Not the one from this country or that country. Not the one with this skin color or that, color, that skin color. Not the one with this amount of money or that amount of money. The one most noble to Allah is the one who has the most taqwa. Who keeps his duty to Allah because he fears Allah's punishment. He wants to put a distance between himself and the punishment of Allah Azza wa Jal. This is the one who has the most nobility with Allah Azza wa Jal. So my dear brothers and sisters, in Islam in conclusion, it's not arrogant to look good. It's not arrogant to dress good. It's not arrogant to have a nice home or to have a nice ride. It's not arrogance to get educated. It's not arrogance to make money because money in itself has a lot of good in it and potential in it. It's you who choose to do evil with it or you who choose to do good with it. Anyone who does not realize this has to really consider his heart when they hear statements that we constantly remind ourselves with. And this comes up because sometimes people say, well, there's always the reminders of this or that. So, you know, maybe people get the insinuation that you shouldn't have a job or get educated or go make some money or earn a living. But ayadu billah. This was written upon the men of this ummah to do. The men of this ummah to do. Their responsibility to take care of the women by going and working and seeking an education and getting the wealth so they can support the ummah and their family and themselves. But because we as humans, the children of Adam, we constantly get sucked into this vacuum 
of worshipping the dunya. We make our happiness, we make our success, we make our pleasure with Allah's qadr, with His decree. We make our patience with Allah's qadr and His decree based on the material things we have. Okay, I'll be happy if I have these material things that I can touch in front of me. Then I'll be happy. I'll be content at that point. I'll be thankful and pleased with Allah's qadr when I have those things that I can touch that I want in front of me. We've attached them all to the material world. With this, we only fool ourselves. But when we remind ourselves day in and day out with humility and humbleness, man tawaba alillah wa whoever is humble before Allah, even though he may be the richest, the wealthiest, the most high in status of the people, man tawaba alillah wa fa'ahu, Allah will raise him up in degrees. In paradise for doing so. When we remind each other to not be arrogant or haughty, when we remind each other that this life has very little value, very little value, that if it had value more than, يعني, than the wing of a mosquito, Allah would not have let a disbeliever drink a sip of water from this earth. When we remind ourselves of the grave and the next life, the mizan that will weigh our deeds, and then those deeds will be weighed, and then still we will need the mercy of Allah to make it to Jannah. When we remind ourselves about the deeds we do, that they're really going to matter on that day of judgment, the good and the bad, again, being weighed, yet still relying upon Allah's mercy to make it to Jannah. When we remind ourselves about not envying, not having jealousy, not longing for what other people have, just being happy with what Allah chose for you. When we remind ourselves about not making this life about the dollar, when we remind ourselves not just about making, not making your life about money. And again, this doesn't mean that you shouldn't go to get an education, and to get a job, and to, to make wealth, and to make money. So you can help your family and yourself and your community at large and the ummah at large. It does not mean those things. And anyone who doesn't understand this really has no understanding of this deen. So when we remind as Allah instructed us to do وَذَكِرْ فَإِنَّ الدِّكْرَ تَنْفَعَ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ Remind one another because reminding one another benefits the believers. We do this as a reminder not to be negative. Not to be, you know, to look at things with a, with a cloud over our heads. We do this. As a reminder to stay steadfast on worshipping Allah and not this dunya, so that we may be successful. Because Allah He said, وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنَّ وَالْإِنسِ إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُونَ The whole point of our existence was to worship Allah, jinn and human. Was to worship our Creator alone without partners. Like everything else in this deen, there needs to be a balance. بَيْنَ الْخَوْفُ الرَّجَاءِ Between fear and hope. The bird needs two balanced wings to fly with grace. Hope and fear have to be balanced. Hope in Allah's mercy, fearing His punishment. And likewise, we need to remember that although we can enjoy the halal things of this life, we need to remember humility and humbleness. Man Whoever is humble, whoever has humility to Allah in front of Allah, Allah will raise him in degrees so that we don't become slaves of our desires. We don't become slaves of money. We don't become slaves of this dunya. May Allah make us of those who are humble and have humility. May Allah make us of those who have no arrogance and pride. May Allah make us of those who when we sin, we turn to Him in repentance and we get closer to Him through those sins rather than distancing ourselves by getting arrogant through acts of obedience. اللهم اغفر للمسلمين والمسلمات والمؤمنين والمؤمنات الاحياء منهم والاموات انك انت سميع قريب مجيب الدعوات يا مقلب القلوب ثبت قلوبنا على دينك اللهم اعز الاسلام والمسلمين وانصرنا على عداك وعداء الدين اللهم انصر اخواننا واخواتنا في فلسطين وفي كل مكان اللهم نفس قلوبهم وثبت اقدامهم وسهل امورهم وارحم موتاهم وارشف مرضاهم وتقبل شهداءهم يا ارحم الراحمين سبحان ربي رب العزة أما يصفون سلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين